Hey everyone, welcome. So a few days back, I was scouring through the internet and I found this amazing photograph by Lucas Breitenbach and I wanted to recreate it in Blender. At the same time, I had also been reading a book called No Stone Unturned, which is about how forensic science has been developing since the early 90s and it talked a lot about how murderers and serial killers buried bodies in those times, hoping they'd never be caught. So I wanted to implement a bit of that into this photograph as well, change the story up a little bit. So let me tell you how I did it. Also, did you notice how I subtly just mentioned that I read books or something? Like I'm some cool ass book reader of some sorts and I do this on a regular, I'm a reader, which I'm so not. I've been trying to develop that habit and the only thing that could grab my attention deficit brain was a book about murders and serial killers and blood and violence. So yeah, I don't read. I apologize for the pretentiousness. It's a pretty simple scene. Nothing out of the box, should be easy to follow, so let's just begin. So I started with a simple block out of the scene from the camera view. The starting part of any render is the most difficult part for me because there's just so much left to do at this point and it can get a little intimidating. For some people, including me in certain instances, it becomes the reason for not even starting a project at all or maybe stopping at a very early stage. So this is why blocking out the scene with just cubes and simple shapes at the beginning takes that stress out a little bit. My next objective was to get the look of the fog right as soon as I could because that itself is a primary character in the scene. So I went on Polyhaven looking for a good HDRI which took a little bit of time, almost an hour of just fidgeting around with different options. I did use the easy HDRI add-on which makes this process of fidgeting around with the HDRIs a little easier so try it out if you haven't already. And for the volume cube that had nothing special going on either, here's a screenshot for that note if you want to replicate it. The next step was adding a reference for some headlights because I knew I wanted a car there in the scene as well. Again these initial steps were just to try and set the right mood for the scene so I could place other assets in the scene around that mood if that makes any sense. Next I went on to Quixel Bridge to download some forest ground textures and I'm really confused if I can actually use these textures or not because I've seen some people use them but then some people say you can't unless it's just in Unreal Engine so I don't know I'm a bit confused. If you guys know what the deal is there please let me know as well. Meanwhile I'll keep using them but if I suddenly disappear again for another 6 months just know that Epic Games maybe assassinated me or even worse sued me for this video and I'll blame it all on you because you didn't let me know beforehand. So you're the one responsible now for everything. You. The next step, I experimented with the ground texture a little bit. I tried the polygon add-on for the first time which helps you mix seamless textures in a way that they don't appear tiled when applied on a large scale. Try that out if you haven't. It's crazy that it's available for free. A very useful tool to have in a workflow. Now I also wanted to try mixing two ground textures together either through shader nodes or through two different planes just proportionally edited around each other but that didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to so I dropped that idea after spending some hours on this stupid little tangent it wasn't even necessary it wasn't even visible in the final render but you know you gotta experiment with different things sometimes they work sometimes they don't next I added a displace modifier on the ground plane to give it that natural crest and draw look it's a really quick way to break the monotony of a plane ground plane next it was time to add details to the bridge this was again nothing complicated just using cubes to make up the different parts of the bridge I use the copy attributes add on a lot here mainly for copying the rotation of the main bridge structure other than that I just used array modifiers and bevel modifiers wherever necessary Real simple modeling techniques, nothing really fancy. And also look at this horribly janky workflow. The bridge is all tilted up and at a weird angle and it only looks good from the camera view. I wish I had the discipline or the patience of a good artist to fix this so I could make my life easier for any future changes I wanted. But I don't and I choose to remain a stupid little dumbass lazy artist instead. And I struggle throughout the scene to align stuff properly. And I know some of you listening have also done this before. And I'm here to tell you it's okay. This scene is a testimony to show you that it doesn't matter how the scene looks off camera. The only thing that matters is the final output. And this is advice coming from a guy who has no industry experience by the way. No credible portfolio, no achievements in the field of CGI. Just advice from a raw hobbyist 3D YouTuber guy. So you know you're getting the best advice out there. So take a note of it. Get it tattooed on your forehead or something. This is life changing advice. So I continued with the sloppy workflow and made other parts of the bridge as well. The only thing you can do to cover up horrible modeling work is to model as many details as you can so no one actually notices the individual bad things in the scene. So I put some effort there and I wish there was some rocket science going on here so I could show off that I did something complex but it was just cubes and cylinders and more cubes and more cylinders. Just super simple modeling process. This also includes the beam under the bridge which is also just a cube with a bevel modifier 
Now sometimes when I see a very uniform part in the render, I try to break apart that silhouette so it doesn't look so uniform. So that's what I'm doing here. Next I thought it was time to add the car. So I downloaded this amazing model of a Ford 150 I found on Sketchfab. I really feel bad when I use such good models that I did not make myself and I just downloaded with a few clicks. It feels like cheating, but I'm also good at manipulating myself into thinking that it's fine. It's not a big deal, it's not cheating. It is what it is. If that's what I tell myself, I simply move on. Now at this point, I thought it was time to get a test render out. So I put some regular nodes in the compositor and render the scene out just to see how everything was looking at this point. And it was looking okay. Bad at some places, okay in the others. Next I thought it was time to add some foliage on the ground because the ground was looking bland as hell. I used the free version of Gscatter to do that. So I spread a bunch of them around on the ground one by one. Gscatter also has some really cool scattering options. Obviously, because it's called Gscatter. I don't know why I felt the need to explicitly mention that, but it does. And that's what I used to spread some rock assets I found on Sketchfab, just to add a little more variety to the ground. Then I added some individual plant assets that are downloaded from Quixel Bridge. These are spread manually, so that I could have a little more control over where I place them. Now at this stage, I was already rendering the scene multiple times, adjusting little things that looked off. I even thought of adding a layer of water underneath the ground plane, because that always makes the scene better somehow. So I spent some time implementing that. And I also thought of adding some garbage bags behind the truck to give the scene a little secondary detail to the serial killer story that I was going for. Next I thought of adding cables to the scene using a geometry node based add-on called Geo Cables. And it has become so easy to add such details in Blender nowadays. Cables, IVs or pipes or whatever you want with the help of geometry nodes, which is great. But also, because it is so easy, we tend to overuse them sometimes, put them in scenes where they don't belong, like I did here. Like why would there be cables hanging off from a bridge like this, it doesn't really make sense. So even though I'm adding them right now, I decided to remove them from the final render because it did not look good and was drawing too much attention to itself. Then came the texturing phase, which was nothing but pasting image textures are found on pexel.com or unsplash.com to the different parts of the bridge. This again was just real sloppy work, just smart UV projecting and cube projecting the objects, making it look good enough with the least amount of effort. I really am a great influence to young and new Blender users, I feel like. I'm teaching them such important skills at this fundamental point in their journey. I feel so great about myself. I feel like I've contributed something good to the community. I feel great. Then I also added some spheres that look like bowls that you usually see on such metal bridges. Again, since my whole scene was a mess, I had some trouble lining it up properly. I even tried using geometry nodes at some point to do that. <laughs> I don't know who I was kidding, as if I could figure that out on my own. So in the end, it was just me manually placing them at the right place. So that was fun. Then it was time to put in the main character into the scene. So I went with this model I found on Sketchfab. Again, just feeling like a cheat using such a perfect model. But obviously, I wasn't going to make a human all by myself. Let's not kid ourselves. Then I spent an unreal amount of time just trying to pose it. It's embarrassing how much time it took me to get it to a good enough pose. A pose that only looked good from the camera angle, by the way. If you're one of those crazy people who make the pose perfect from all angles, you do not belong here. Get out. Get out from here. Click away. Never show your face around in these parts again. Just get out, piss off. I then added an image plane with a puff of dust in it to show that the guy was digging actively in the scene. But when I rendered it out, a lot of people said it looked like sparks and like the character was welding something, which was not at all what I was going for. So I thought of adding the dust puff later in Photoshop when I was post-processing. Now after this point, it was just experimenting with different things, adding some stuff, removing some stuff, adjusting the camera, fixing tiny things. Just a barrage of tiny little changes. I wish I could cover them all in this video, but that would make this video unbearably long. But you need to understand how much time I spent doing this, because I feel like a YouTube video can sometimes seem too perfect and discourage new users or beginners because they might feel like their workflow isn't as good as an artist they saw on YouTube. So this is just to tell you that I made a lot of stupid decisions, made a lot of changes. It just took me two days to model the overall scene and then five days of just changing small things here and there and then rendering it again and again and then changing things again and then rendering again and it was a long tedious process. Then with a little bit of post-processing work, I finally finished the scene and this is how the final thing turned out. It took around 3000 samples and around five and a half hours to render this single frame. This is because I have a GTX 1650. If you have a better graphic card, you probably won't get such high render times. And this was also because there was a ton of volumetrics in the scene. So that added up to the render time as well. But yeah, this is it. This is how it turned out.
To be honest, I can't seem to find any problems in it anymore because I've been looking at it constantly for the past week. So why don't you guys help me out a little bit? Let me know where I could improve. I seriously need some constructive feedback and I'm relying on you for it. So please let me know. Comment any questions you might have regarding the scene because this might have been a bit too fast for any new users. But that's it for now. That's it for this video. I'll probably see you guys later. Thanks for watching if you did. Bye bye.